How did, oh, did that get left in the um, copy machine? Oh, more. Thank you. But it's not in color. <laughs> 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 Good evening. Uh, welcome to everyone uh, for uh, the March 14th school board meeting. And I'd like to start off with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Item number two is adjustments to the agenda. I would just like to start by saying that item number five, which is comments from the public on non-agenda items, um, I would like to see change to just public comment so that if there's anybody here who would like to speak on budget, they would be able to do so and not have to wait till the end of the evening. Yes. Agreement? Yes. Okay, great. Um, there's also um, some changes in regards to communications and recognition. Uh, instead of going through them one by one, just the flexibility to go beyond uh, the three uh, acknowledgments and the three communications uh, will just allow that to be open. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ann, would you like to make an amendment? I wanted to request that item 12E, consideration of proposed 0607 school budget, be moved up in the interest of the folks who have come tonight who I suspect are perhaps interested in the budget so that they can be here for that vote and discussion. Um, we would most likely add that to, it would be after public comment, and if we put that before communications. Would that be an appropriate place? I'll take that as an agreement, and we'll put it after the comments from the public. Thank you. Uh, in your packet is the February school board minutes. Do we have a motion to accept those as presented? I have one adjustment in the interest of recognizing um, giving credit where credit is due. I had, I think it's quoted um, that I had thanked the Cape Elizabeth Police Department for their donation to the Middle School Parents Association, but they actually made donations to all the parents' associations. Okay. We can make that change. And with that change, all those in favor? 7-0. Comments by our high school and middle school representatives. If we could start with the middle school. Um, Jack couldn't make it tonight. He uh, suffered a finger injury, and he called me from the ER, fortunately. <laughs> what a dedicated yeah. representative. <laughs> Definitely. Um, this Thursday, we'll be hosting the Trivia Bee. It's our first Trivia Bee, and a lot of kids are getting really excited and dressing up. We're going to have a lot of good prizes, and it should be really fun. Also, last week, we finished MEA testing, and this is the first time that every middle school student tested, and that also means that we have more people that re need to retake, and we have 80 people retaking this year, so it's a lot of people. Um, in the fifth grade, a bottle and can recycling project had returned $300, and a check of $100 will be delivered to the Red Cross for Katrina relief. Also, Holly Hoffman, a parent volunteer from Ms. Connolly's class, is helping a group of students paint an underwater mural in the fifth grade wing. Um, also, in the seventh grade, we also have murals that are progressing really well. Girls basketball ended last week, and track is coming along nicely. Just as a last note, I would like to say that the whole school sends their best to Mr. Doan as he is recovering from back surgery, and to Mr. Earl, who is also recu recuperating from surgery. surgery. Um, Mr. Earl's long-term sub will be Mr. Lovata for this year. Do we have any questions for our representative? 
Thank you very much. You can have the high school. <coughs> Hello. Um, currently at the high school, we're in the midst of our winter fest, uh, which means we're participating in lots of fun activities. Uh, today, the 3v3 basketball tournament began, which I wasn't a part of, but it sounded like a good time. Um, the socks and mittens, uh, faculty versus student game, which is kind of like a big tradition, it's a lot of fun, is on Thursday, and I think everyone's looking forward to that. Uh, we also have a hallway decorating competition between the classes tomorrow night, which is always a good turnout and is a lot of fun. And also for the first year, uh, we had a game called Paranoia, in which you get a card with someone's name on it in the school and you have to find them and eliminate them from the game, all the while someone is tracking you down and you don't know who, so you're very paranoid. Um, <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. Um, we had over 200 kids participate in it, um, and I think everyone really liked it. I hope it becomes a tradition. Um, also, this weekend we had the WANAC Festival at our school, and we won for Class B. I think Falmouth won for Class A. And Doug Ginn, Adam Stephanus, Gina Stevenson, and Dave Register were all awarded as um, all festival actors, which is kind of like all conference and sports, so congratulations to them. Also the hockey team won states and uh, Steve Wessler finally came and had that uh, sexual harassment seminar and the, it was separated into boys and girls and everyone was really respectful. like. Yeah, the boys were even respectful, and uh, <laughs> and um, he covered the issues of sexual harassment more importantly than just the dance. But with the dance, he stressed the issue of consent, and I think the dance went over quite well. And um, students are interested in the budget cuts, and there's a lot of talk about that. And the SATs are coming up pretty soon, which is a little stressful. And there's kind of a lot of work right now, which is stressful. <laughs> That's it. Great. Anne, do you have a question? Yeah, I just want to say I attended the 1X Friday night, and I thought it was just, it was great. Um, all the plays were great, but I thought audience was hysterical. And I was wondering if you guys know if it's going to be performed again. Will there be another opportunity for the community to see capes one act yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. okay yes okay great. <laughs> okay. thank you I, I would urge when you see that date come out i would really urge folks to go see it. it's very funny yeah, and really really, fun. really well done yeah and the set is amazing mm -hmm. kevin yeah just a comment i i've been unable to attend the budget hearings, but I have been watching them and or the tapes. And I'm very proud of the student government members and other students who showed up for those hearings to speak on behalf of their teachers. It's great to know that you guys have such a bond with your teachers that you would come out and do that on their behalf. So I applaud you all and please convey that to the SAC. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Great. Thanks a lot for coming out tonight. Thanks. Appreciate Thank you. It. At this point, uh, we are at uh, the opportunity for public comment. And if anybody would like to come to the podium, state their name, um, and speak to the school board as a whole, um, I welcome you at this time. OK. Thank you. Oh, we do. Okay, Shh. come on up, Heather. Sorry. Um, I was under the impression that this meeting started at 7:30, so. <laughs> um, but I was planning on.
photocopying this for a member of each one of you and stapling it together. However, it's not stapled nor photocopied, so this is just the one copy we have, so. And this is, this is Heather Furman. <laughs> and she is a member of the SAC at the high school. Yeah. Uh, and a, a junior. And it reads, um, Dear members of the Cape Elizabeth School Board, we, the students of Cape Elizabeth High School, here signed advocate for the rejection of the 3.4% school spending budget and the adoption of the 7.7 .7 budget earlier proposed by Superintendent Alan Hawkins. We are directly impacted by our school's budget, and although the majority of us are neither taxpaying nor voting citizens, we feel it is time for us to advocate for ourselves. With this petition, we are taking responsibility for our own education, for helping our community leaders to understand how detrimental the spending cap would be. The 3.4% budget cap is insufficient to support not only the number of students at the high school right now, but is completely unreasonable with an increasing amount of students enrolling in Cape Elizabeth High School every year. Budget cuts required by this cap would be devastating to our learning environment and limit our opportunities for extracurricular activities. As countless members of this community have said, education is an investment. We are the future of this world, the future parents, the future voters, and the future leaders. The school cannot be expected to deliver the excellent education we need if the necessary resources are denied. Education has been the number one priority for residents in this community, and this tradition of valuing education is vital to the future of our community and our world. We hope you will consider our concerns when making this extremely important decision. Signed, Matt Oak, Student Advisory Council President, Heather Furman, Senior Class President, and do you have a number? But there yeah, there's 380 people. signatures. 380. There are 380 signatures yeah. from high school students. Yes. I was going to read that, but you said it better, so. <laughs> That's true. You could have, but I could your only copy, didn't I? <laughs> no, actually, I have a copy right here. Oh, do you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. Okay. I thought you gave it to me. I would have, you would have done a better job, I'm sure. But um, we will get copies for the rest of the board. Okay. Um, so that they Thank do. you. I'm sorry about that. Thanks. <laughs> uh, are there any other comments at this time? <clears throat> All right. Uh, moving on to the next item, which was uh, under new business, and it is the consideration of the proposed 2006-2007 school budget. Want a motion? Excuse me. Want a motion? I am looking for a motion from our finance chair, if I could. <clears throat> Bear with me. I believe this is my first motion. <laughs> <laughs> So I move that we accept the um, superintendent's adjusted budget of, sorry, $18,774,902. Thank you. Um, discussion. Kathy. In the interest of realizing that I probably wouldn't be able to ad lib on, on uh, short notice, I wrote out what I wanted to say this evening. I'd first like to thank Alan Hawkins and his staff for the hard work and thoughtful review of each and every line of the budget. I know that Alan and his staff have put in many long hours, and I appreciate their commitment to the schools. I have a child in the school as well as having gone through the system myself. I'm very committed to the Cape Schools and agree that we all have the best interest of the schools at heart. I appreciate all the citizen input the board received and have weighed all the comments and suggestions. I noted that the board and or town council received approximately 103 contacts. This represents 8.2% of school system families or 2.5% of Cape households. I also noted a few comments in regards to sticking with this town council spending cap. To my knowledge, we have not heard from the rest of the citizens. I reflected on my responsibilities to the community as an elected official in my campaign promise to be fiscally responsible. I also thought about the current state of the economy and how it has impacted many citizens. Having said that, I am unable to support the 7% budget that is proposed this evening. 
I feel that a 7% increase is too much to ask the taxpayer to bear. The school has received increases over the last three years totaling 16.8%. If we were to move forward with a 7% increase this year, that would total 23.8% over the last four years. I do support the 3.4% spending cap with a request to the Town Council for consideration of our increased student population and possibly a sharing of costs on the increase in energy expenses. My commitment to the schools remains strong and I feel we can reach a reasonable middle ground. Thanks. Linda? I too prepared something to say tonight uh, in light of the circumstances. I, as a school board member and a parent of two children in our schools, retain a firm belief in providing the financial support necessary to uphold the excellent educational standards of the Cape Elizabeth School District. As a freshman member of the board, I spent considerable time throughout this whole process listening to the superintendent, the administrators, teachers, parents, my fellow board members, and others in our community. I have spent countless hours going over the numbers, asking questions, reviewing additional information as it became available. And at times, I felt a bit, a bit overwhelmed by the responsibility before me. But then I would take a moment and remi remind myself to focus on the needs <coughs> of our students and my commitment to this community. I commend Alan Hawkins and the DLT for their time and commitment in developing a proposal that helped to give me a clear picture of what is needed to maintain our schools and the quality of education we want for all of our children. I also believe that today's economic climate speaks to the importance of a close review of our expenditures and revenue sources. As a member of the Finance Committee, we, initi we initiated the workshops based on a budget with 3.4 spending cap, plus adjustments for increased student population and other fixed expenses that are out of our control. This remains, in my mind, the best proposal to bring to our town council for consideration. Therefore, respectfully, I cannot support the budget reflective of the 7% increase. Thank you. You have other comments? Oh, I'll jump in. I am voting to support the recommended budget as proposed. This year's budget development process has differed than those that I've previously participated in over the last five years. And it's really not surprising that it's different. We have a new superintendent, we have different board members, we have a rotating finance chair, and we have a different and informed citizen group this year. This different process, while fundamentally the same because we are a board governed by policy and charter, has presented several new opportunities for me to reach the decision to support this budget tonight. This year I saw a clearer picture of the state of our schools and the effect that the declining state and federal educational monies, years of trimming and escalating fixed costs have had on our budget and our schools. Our workshops and the public input along with the extensive information that we've heard from the DLT have led me to see more clearly the options I could recommend as a school board member. This budget is a responsible budget that allows us to plan for the unexpected, to address some issues that have fallen by the wayside in the past few years, and to move our district forward. And I'm not saying that we're looking at moving it forward a lot. The 7.0% that I am um, supporting actually provide some things that we have requested year after year to no avail. The need is still there. They, these needs are not temporary. They are long-standing needs that keep coming back to us as issues that have directly affected student learning. I've been a part of budget proposals where our board has presented a needs-based budget to our town council and we have sat down with them to come up with a reasonable budget that attempted to meet the needs of not only our schools, but also to balance the town council's goal of meeting the needs of all of its citizens. 
I've also unfortunately been a part of a budget proposal where we were forced to conform to inflexible approaches to school budgeting and tax policy decisions with little public discussion that ended up hurting our schools. Caps have been placed, education funding relief has been denied through their decision regarding our LD number one monies, and all of a sudden we were asked to back into a number that did not allow us to respond to the variety of things that we've talked about over the last workshops, the unfunded mandates, the local control that we've heard through community support, or the fixed educational costs ranging from everything from energy uh, to health care benefits for our teachers. They do not tie very well into a consumer price index. So this year I looked at what my role as a school board member really was. I pulled out all those books and all those association manuals and what I found was exactly what I knew when I first ran for the school board. Skipping all the policy responsibilities, et cetera, et cetera, I narrowed it down to what my role in budget development was, and it was very clear. The role of not only superintendents, but all school board members is to inform the citizens of the true needs of the children in their charge and to be uncompromised advocates for the funds to meet these needs. And that's why I support the 7.0% budget. Anybody else? We were very lucky that you had a new set of eyes looking at the budget because it is true that long before the tax caps were put in place that we were already eroding our annual budget to meet the demands of the council. The cap last year most certainly hurt us, as Elaine has more articulately described. Um, I've given a lot of thought to this, spoken to members of the board, gone back and forth, back and forth, and decided early on that I would support the superintendent in his legitimate request for a budget figure. And I have been consistent with that. And I am supporting the 7% because our superintendent has told us this is what we need in order to at least get a little bit ahead of where we've been for the last several years. This battle does not end tonight. It continues for the next several weeks at least, and it will carry over most certainly into next year. Um, I want to thank everyone who has come out. I thank the members of the SAC. I want to thank everyone from the public who has come out to offer their support. And I will vote tonight in favor of the 7% budget that Alan has recommended to us. Thank you. Patricia, I yes. neglected to call you. <laughs> um, I have a whole sort of set of notes here. <laughs> and that's sort of representative of the process that I've gone through through this budget. I've gone back and forth. I've spent a lot of time analyzing. Um, the numbers tell all sorts of different stories. The bottom line is I do support the 7% budget. I think that based on the information that we have today, it reflects the resources that the school department um, needs to work towards its mission, which is one that was adopted by the community. I want to thank those people who have taken time to share their comments. I think the dialogue in and of itself has been very valuable. I know I've learned a lot through the process. Several themes emerged from some of the comments I did take into consideration. Every comment we received, it sort of allowed me to put my decisions in different perspectives, thus I went like this. Um, two themes I think emerged that I'd like to just, I think bear repeating that sort of put some of our decisions into perspective. Many people commented, um, you know, you need to be conservative, you need to uh, apply, I guess, I had a lot of analogies to the business world and what's going on in the economy myself included, as that's my background, and I sort of tried to do all these statistical analysis. I think what it comes down to is, yes, we do do that. The st statistics do support that we are an efficient school system. But the business model doesn't fit entirely. Education is different. Um, I think one quote, I also went back to the brochures, and one quote, quote sort of stuck with me, that public education is one of the most highly regulated in institutions in our society. 
We have many stakeholders. These are some of the ideas that I thought we differed from business. We have many stakeholders. We have no ability to raise our revenues or adjust that. I think one person made that comment. We're competing um, with and dealing with very different expectations from a wide range of people. We have a limited ability to control our expenses because we are regulated. We can't turn a child away, no matter what their needs are. We have to serve them. We have, we have to meet state, state and federal legislative mandates, many of which are not fully funded or even funded at all. Our expenses are impacted by decisions beyond our control. When the planning board approves a housing development, that comes typically with children. I would argue with a few exceptions, households with children are net users rather than contributors to the tax base. And, the, and in conclusion on this point, we're dealing with a human factor. We're dealing with kids, not cars, furniture. The second point I think that's important to make is that a theme that's run through all the comments is that people don't want their taxes to go up, even if conceptually they support education. Several suggestions have been made in this area, and I think most are worthy of communication, uh, consideration, excuse me. But another thing we have to look at is this community has made decisions which, in essence, to some extent, have capped revenues. Um, making the taxpayer the sole fun, uh, funding source for all of the things that the community wants, a local police dispatch, green space, and good schools. So by definition, any investment we make in education is going to translate into a tax increase. Those are all decisions that we don't necessarily have control over. Given those parameters and the thoughtful process that I think has gone into the budget, I do support the 7%. Thank you. Do we have any other comment from school board members? <clears throat> well, this was um, a heck of a year to be the finance chair for the first time. <laughs> um, I went through the budget process last year when the cap was first put, the spending cap was first applied. And <coughs> Um, frankly, the interest from the public was negligible, if anything. And that had a really big impact as to how the process proceeded. Um, we did make an effort to have some adjustment made based on the EPS formula being combined with LD1, but it was unsuccessful. So that is the background. We went into our meeting in January with the town council and I was pretty much thinking this year is going to be like last year. And I said clearly, well, we understand you have a CPI cap. Uh, we're going to present a budget at that level. But we want to show you what we think is necessary to run these schools to the level that is appropriate for our students. It's just so that knowledge is out there that this is what we will be foregoing. And that's how I thought we were going to proceed. Then I started sitting in on some finance committee meetings and getting some information, and I saw how that cap was really going to impact the schools and how dire the results were going to be. And I started thinking, okay, we're, really, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to ask for more money. And with the finance committee, we spent a great deal of time saying, okay, why don't we try to we'll look at this enrollment adjustment that they, they left as a possibility. And obviously, the energy increase are so huge, maybe they would consider that an extraordinary expense. Then we had our workshops, and people attended. Not just a few, but many. And they attended the first one and the second one, and then we had the public forum where there was people sitting, standing, almost everywhere possible, to the point where somebody called with concerns about the fire safety. <laughs> That um, gave me pause to say, okay, what, the way that I've gone about this, is that appropriate? Is that my role? <clears throat> and Elaine, I actually brought mine with me <laughs> because it did make me go back and say, well, how, as a school board member, how has it been outlined by the state? And it does say very clearly the school board is responsible for ensuring that the school unit has the resources for staff, buildings, furnishings, and instructional materials to carry out the educational program. Well, during the workshops, I saw some pretty impressive books. 
that had no covers. I saw some furniture that I would not want my children to sit on, and I saw some pictures that were, frankly, devastating. So here I am this evening saying, I cannot in good conscience say we need an adjustment, and let's back into that figure, because I do not believe that that will address the needs of our schools. Schools are being told that they need to increase the science and math aptitude of the students while making sure they improve reading and writing at the same time. They're being told that they need to do this for every child or they're going to be considered a failure. They're being told that they need to make sure that these future citizens have the skills to keep America competitive so our economic system doesn't collapse in light of the global economy. They're being told that they need to make sure that the students stay fit, eat well, so that they don't burden society with future medical needs that we see existing today. They're being told that they must solve behavioral and emotional problems. They're being told that they need to provide extracurricular activities to provide them a full range of learning experiences and company, encompassing competitive sports, music, theater, to name a few. They are being told to do all of this, but to do it within constraints that are similar to what the town council has placed. Cape Elizabeth's children are Cape Elizabeth's future, and they're America's future, and they're the world's future. I believe that we all want our children to succeed. <coughs> Research and experience has shown us that this is the right thing to do, and I believe that this budget does that. Is there any further discussion at this time? Right, well, now I feel like I have to say something. <laughs> and really, I've said it in past meetings, so honestly, I can't add anything than what I've said prior to tonight or what everybody else has said. The only thing I will add is that, and I think you all know this, but the community, the teachers, the parents, um, and the other citizens who have come to our meetings, that you really have um, helped us to get to the place where we are tonight, and um, I know we've said that over and over again, but you've helped us um, to make, for some people to make, for us to make these decisions, and, um, and I want to thank you and tell you how much we really appreciate that. Okay, being no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion? Five, all those opposed? Two. Thank you. Moving to communications. We have a few we're going to start off with. If you guys don't, if, if the audience doesn't want to stay for the rest of this, of course you can leave, but we're, we welcome you. There's a lot of wonderful things to share, too, so um, that would be a um, good time if you do have to leave. Okay, yeah, why don't we move on? Okay. Uh, the first one I have is a retirement, and I do have to tell you up front, this is one that this person has uh, had a great deal of difficulty writing this letter. And this person and I have been in communication several times in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it is definitely uh, this person's desire to go until the very end of the year and not announce this and walk out very quietly at the end. has been very clear about that. But I have been in communication with her. I haven't been browbeating her, but I did talk with her about the fact that one of the problems we have is if we are going to replace staff with quality staff, we need to get those advertisements in as possible into the newspaper. And this weekend, if you looked at the newspaper, the advertisements for teaching positions were beginning to come. So I, I will thank her first for allowing me to do this, and I will hope that staff who works with her will also take seriously her request 
uh, for not being looked at as the lame duck. So this letter is, uh, to me is, is, is states, Dear Allen, it is with great regret and genuine sorrow that I write my intentions to retire from teaching in Cape Elizabeth at the end of the 2005-2006 school year. It has been a joy and a privilege to work with the young men and women of Cape Elizabeth for the past 36 years. They are the most caring, intelligent, charming, tenacious, and diligent young people in the world. Every moment spent with them has been a joy. I am very fortunate indeed to have had such a wonderful job. And then she goes on to say, it is my wish that this information not be made public, as I do not wish to be a lame duck teacher uh, to the class. Again, please understand that I have been in contact with her, as has her principal, to make sure she's comfortable with what I'm doing. I intend to continue to prepare my current charges for advanced math courses in high school and beyond. I also do not want the staff to know of my decision. Uh, I would very much like to leave quietly and without fan <coughs> fear. And this is signed by Mary Murphy, who is an eighth grade math teacher at uh, Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Mary Murphy, who when I first met her was M squared and is now M cubed, is a friend of mine. She's always been a friend of the students of Cape Elizabeth. She is right up there with the very best of our teachers. I will personally miss her, and unfortunately, the students who will not get to have her as a teacher will never know what they have missed. She's going to be really tough to replace, and I'd like to personally wish her well for the balance of this year and throughout her entire retirement. Thank you. Okay. The second one that I have is just to, just to inform you that you voted at the last meeting uh, to accept with regrets the, re uh, the retirement of Claire Labrie, who is our Special Services Director. I did want you to know that the position has been advertised. It was in the paper this week. It's also on servingschools.com. Uh, the applications close on March 31st at 4 o'clock. My intention is to move as quickly in April to get that position filled. Uh, not because I'm trying to push Claire out at the door, but because I would like to hire someone who Claire can uh, uh, excuse me, also having an opportunity to work with uh, as we close the school year. And so we will be moving on that as quickly as possible. Uh, <clears throat> the third thing that I have is communications from Susan Gendron, who is the Commissioner of Education. One of them is addressed to Steve Conley at Cape Elizabeth Middle School, and the other is addressed to Tom Eismeyer at Pond Cove Elementary School. Basically, the information is an important aspect of the No Child Left Behind Act is a recognition of schools achieving consistently high performance in reading and math. Recognition of these schools is based on Maine's learning results performance standards. Consistently high performance schools have maintained average student performance over the past three years at or above the following levels. In reading, uh, it is 70% of students at the meets or exceeds the standards, and math, 50% of the students at meets or exceeds the standards. It is with great pleasure that we recognize Cape Elizabeth Middle School and Pond Cove Elementary School as consistently high performing schools in reading and math at grade eight and grade four. And it also goes on to say and closes a certificate of achievement, which you may display with pride at your schools. Congratulations to your entire school community for a job well done and signed by Susan Gendron. Congratulations to both schools. And that's all the communication I have at this point. Yeah, we have a few others to add. So, um, Kevin? Okay, and then Rebecca. I received notice from the Board of Directors of Citizens United to protect our public safety schools and communities that there's going to be a news conference and panel discussion to kick off a statewide campaign against the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights or Tabor. The time and place is Thursday, March 16th at the University of Maine in Augusta. I can give you directions if you would like it. It starts at 9.30 in the morning. And um, actually, I think after the press conference until noon, I, yeah. So between 9.30 and 12, a panel of experts will discuss the mechanics of how the proposed Maine Tabor legislation would work at the state and local levels of government. So um, that was particularly sent out to superintendents and school boards, but I share that with everybody. 
Um, and also, I'd like for the board to consider um, adding this to an agenda for discussion and vote as to an official position on Tabor. Great. Um, if you're going to make that a, uh, the school board agenda request, you want to just next next time we meet would be fine. Would be okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm prepared to talk about it. All right. Um, I would just also like to make it, uh, some additional information available to the school board. Um, at your desks or seats this evening, I put down an invitation by the Casco Bay Educational Alliance, of which we are now a member, uh, for you. It is a school board professional development opportunity being offered by them. We are going to be having Jim Kerrigan and Wes Bonney from the Maine State Department of Education, and they are the authors of the select panel report that came out this fall. Um, I also included an updated version of that draft um, at your seat. I think this is a great opportunity. It's actually April 5th. Um, it's a Wednesday evening. We decided to make it a 6.30 to 9 o'clock uh, dessert and coffee. We actually got grant money to attend. It is being held at the Woodlands Country Club in Falmouth. The, again, the, it starts at 6.30. We will hear the panel report from 7 to 7.45. Then they're going to be having question and answers from all the various school board members that are a member of Casco Bay Alliance. We're going to break out into district discussions, but the cross-district discussion so that you will be having a conversation with perhaps someone from Cumberland or someone from South Portland and coming up with uh, ideas about the good, the bad, the potential, and then we'll, we'll break back out and have some feedback. So they are trying to get a count on that, so if you could get back to me whether you would be interested in going. And we did decide to have another speaker come. We're scheduling that for June. And the group as a whole was hoping to have some speakers come on um, how to communicate better to our communities. It's a PR type of piece. And they've got some great ideas from some national speakers. So um, we can look forward to that. Anyways, um, just get back in touch with me. Elaine, Wes Bonney was one of the people who was on this committee that wrote this report. I am not entirely sure. I know he's coming to speak to the report uh -huh. um, on April 5th. Okay. Thanks. Are there any other communications? I'm glad so many members of the faculty and, and the administrators are here. Uh, this is personal. I want to thank the board, the administrators, the DLT, the faculty, the Cape Elizabeth Education Association and all the individual faculty members who took the time to express their concern over my recent surgery. My room looked like a garden, and it was great to be able to focus on that through some of the tougher days while I was in the hospital. I really appreciate your expression of concern. I'm back, I'm in the midst of it, and I will continue to be there. Thank you. And welcome back, Kevin. And thank you for keeping yourself updated on the budget issues so that you could vote tonight. We really appreciate that. Uh, moving on to recognition. We, it must be the time of year, but <laughs> we have got a lot of great things that are happening in our schools with our teachers and students. And I really can't decide where to start, but I'm going to hopefully not shortchange anybody or any school. I'm going to start off with Pond Cove. The uh, second grade teacher, uh, Sarah Lewis, um, has arranged to share her classroom's writing pieces, which will be printed and bound with a school uh, in Louisiana. And it, they have promised to then, no, correct me if I'm, I'm going up the wrong road here, but they're going to be adding it to their school, their permanent school library as an addition from the uh, school children of Cape Elizabeth. So it's a great um, way to 
take pride in, in our student work and to also contribute to another area that perhaps needs help in starting over again. So thank you for that and congratulations to the students and the teachers for that act. The, from Community Services, uh, I just wanted to make an announcement that the Cape Elizabeth K-6 through chess team placed second in the state championship. They missed first only by half a point. The team members were Shannon Daly, Peter Campbell, Matthew Fishbein, Brett Parker, Alex Silva, Danny Brett, Tammy Brett, Jack Demeter, Demeter Ethan Dupere, and Matthew Reale Hatem. Um, I hope I didn't butcher those too much, but anyways, they, they what a great job they did too. Moving to the middle school. I just would like to share with you that Jeremy Almendiger, who is an eighth grader, uh, was the champion of the Cape Elizabeth Middle School Spelling Bee, and he did exceptionally well in our county uh, uh, co competition. Ethan Danino was the Cape Elizabeth Middle School runner-up. We also had some great opportunity to showcase some of the artwork of our middle schoolers. I would like to mention that Holly McIntyre Jay Cushing and Nell Britton all had pieces of art that were displayed at the Maine College of Art and were the Regional Scholastic Art Awards as given out by the, con the Congressional District Art Commission. And they can be, uh, they were written up in the Close to Home, which was a Portland paper, and they also can be viewed at the Portland Museum of Art. We have some math awards for our middle schoolers. Uh, our middle school fifth grade math team came in first place at a recent math meet. Uh, they, that was a state math meet, I believe. And those participants were Emma Inhorn, Daniel Epstein, Travis Delano, I'm gonna practice this one, um, Ro <laughs> it'll help, uh, Rohit, Sarunga Varapu, uh, Sam Sherman, Cam Caswell, Alex Cooley, and Matt Gilman, and also the sixth grade math team came in second place. And the members of that were again Ethan Danino, Ian McInerney, Thomas Bottomley, and Connor Logan. Another great job and a lot of talented students. We have also an honor that's to be bestowed upon one of our teachers. Uh, Suzanne Janelle, who is a uh, foreign language teacher at our middle school, was recently, on Friday, announced to be the Flame Teacher of the Year or the Foreign Language Teacher of the Year for the state of Maine, and this was awarded last Friday. So a great honor, congratulations to her work and all the students that benefit from her teaching. Moving along to some of the things that I think that some of us may have seen already in the newspaper, but I would like to recognize the fact that we do have um, some state championships that happened this past weekend. The boys ice hockey won the state championship on Saturday afternoon. Congratulations to them. And also the Nordic skiing. Both the boys and the girls were honored last night by a town council declaration for their state championships that they uh, won several weeks ago. And as Ann said, the one act play, again, another busy weekend for the high school, but they did an outstanding job with their performance of um, audience. And they won the regionals and will be competing in Yarmouth, I believe. So that'd be one place for us to go see it, and hopefully they will bring it back to the community. I have anything else as far as uh, any type of announcements? The Youth Art Month exhibit at the Portland Museum of Art. We also have two high school students. I did mention the middle school students, but one of those was here tonight, Daley Gruen, who was our representative uh, for Self Portrait, and uh, Carolyn Etner. So congratulations to all those students also. Anybody else have any other reminders or anything else they'd like to share? Congratulations. Good. Uh, the superintendent's report. Okay, I have just some very brief items to mention. First of all, as you've heard me talk about several times this year, 
we are in the process of, of working our way into the NWEA testing. Uh, currently, the fifth grade has completed their testing. The ninth grade is in the process of completing at this point. We're doing this as baseline data so that we can get a sense of uh, what, the, what the testing shows us. And uh, I have been told by Sarah and by the principals at each building that the amount of information that comes from this is unbelievable. Uh, it is very important that we get baseline and then begin to move from there to begin to get a series of data. Uh, we are looking at some more testing for the spring, uh, and then we'll be looking at uh, a much broader sweep in the fall uh, with the testing in different grade levels. Uh, we've also, you heard them mention, we did MEAs this past week. Uh, a report that I got back today is eighth grade, as you will remember, does it on computer. And what it was told is, is that it went fairly well. However, aging equipment and aging wiring did get in the way at times during that. And so it was, uh, we, we were fortunate to have technicians on board who could come in and do as much as quickly as possible to be sure we made it through. I will remind all of you that this year's MEA is a much more extended MEA, uh, covering many more grade levels. And that on April 1st, as you heard the high school students report, uh, we will be doing SATs. Uh, a piece that I had not been clear on until just recently is that the SATs are now belong to the buildings where uh, the students are. So uh, it used to be that students would go to another high school to take their SATs. Uh, this year, SATs for Cape Elizabeth students are owned by Cape Elizabeth, and they will give them there. And I was also told that if I close school because of snow, it will be our responsibility to find another day to make them up. So we won't close because of snow, even though it's April 1st. We'll get through as best we can. Uh, we do have a new curriculum committee, and Sarah has agreed to report on it tonight, so I'm going to just skip over that, and when she does her report, can talk about that briefly. And finally, the calendar committee for 2006-2007, yes, that is right, uh, we'll be meeting for the first time on March 21st to begin to finalize a calendar plan for that year. And uh, uh, Ann Belden will be chairing that as chair of the policy committee. Those are very quick reports, but just some that I wanted to mention quickly to you. Great. Any questions for Alan this evening regarding the report? Okay. Uh, at this point, we will welcome Sarah Simmons, our curriculum coordinator, for a presentation. Thank you. Um, Alan asked me to prepare just a few um, remarks and to provide you with a bit of an update with regard to our curriculum work um, over the course of the, the school year. Um, the first part of the school year, I would say, was for Alan to kind of get his feet underneath him and to see what was happening, um, become familiar with the future direction plan, and kind of get a lay of the land. Um, we also, during the fall, had some visits. The uh, Department of Education scheduled uh, visits um, around self-assessment and implementation of learning results, as well as the NEASC visit at the high school. And those two visits resulted in um, a self-assessment process and subsequent reports that have helped us with um, the curriculum work as well. So that was sort of the, the fall part um, of the year. Um, then in January, the end of January, Alan and I met with the um, CIA team, CIA Curriculum Instruction and Assessment team, uh, with representatives from each of the buildings um, and all of the content areas, uh, the core content areas, and talked with them a little bit about um, what Alan was seeing, what his vision was, what we've talked about, what Alan and I have talked about with the principals, and sort of where we saw curriculum needing to go, given um, the information that we were getting from the visits, as well as uh, reconnecting with the future direction plan, um, and getting their feedback on where did they think uh, we needed to go, were their thoughts similar to what we were thinking, and then asking them if they would like to continue with us on this journey. Many of the CIA team members have um, been with me from um, the early stages that I was here in the district in 2001. And so they've kind of put in their, their time, and this was an opportunity for them to say thank you. I've, I'm ready to pass the torch to someone else. Um, from that uh, meeting, the end of January, we waited to hear back from folks as to whether they wanted to continue or not. 
and then presented that information to the building principals and had a discussion um, around uh, how did we want, what did that group need to look like um, as we moved forward, given that the task was somewhat changed from where we had been headed in the past. Um, the CIA team focused had initially, when we first got started in 2001, had been looking at curriculum. We uh, were very much guided by the future direction plan and the action steps that had been articulated and kind of started our way down that road. Um, but a year or so into it, uh, 2003, we started to focus more on the A part of CIA, the assessment component, sort of got pulled away from our curriculum work. And so we were needing to, um, the vision that Alan had shared with the team uh, uh, was that we needed to go back to focus on the curriculum work. Um, so we touched base with the principals, talked about who we wanted to be on this team, how could we best um, uh, have the people who could help us to move forward, could ask important and sometimes difficult questions. How did that team need to be reconfigured? And um, the team now is a little bit smaller than it was. We had approximately 20 people, um, primarily just from the buildings, uh, teacher representatives from the buildings. Now we have, um, we have sort of a mix of, of former CIA team members and new uh, people coming on board. We also have each of the building principals, Alan and myself, and two school board members now are on the reconfigured CIA team. So it's a little bit, little bit smaller, but uh, more representative. Um, we met, uh, that new group met for the first time for an all-day meeting on March 2nd, where um, we shared, Alan was able to share some information with the group around some work that he's been doing with um, Dufour, Rick Dufour, his work around um, essential knowledge um, and skills uh, with um, curriculum, uh, common assessments, supporting students, collaborative cultures, keys to effective teams, team learning processes, and professional learning communities. And those, uh, let's see, seven or eight areas for, form sort of an overarching umbrella that connects with all of the work that we're doing with curriculum as well as looking more systemically at what we're doing and how curriculum um, is impacted uh, and impacts all of the other areas. So Alan shared some of that information with folks. Um, I shared some of our past work. That was one of our big questions uh, when we met with the original CIA team. They wanted very clearly for us to hear that uh, people didn't want to start from scratch. They wanted to be able to take the work at the great deal of work that had been done between 2001 and 2003 and move that forward, not, not to just sort of let it, uh, leave it by the wayside, but to figure out how we could move that along. So I shared some of that information. Many of the teachers who came um, were not a part of um, the future direction plan work, so they needed information about that. They needed to know more about the work that we had done with our curriculum database, with our curriculum and assessment guides that had been developed. So there was some education that happened during that first morning. And then in the afternoon, we got concrete, and we uh, handed people some samples of curriculum guide templates um, ranging from very specific lesson plan templates all the way up to larger, broader curriculum document, samples of curriculum documents. And just ask people to look at those through the lens of um, some criteria that I had um, learned about through a uh, training that I attended in September with a national organization, Phi Delta Kappen, which was a, a, a place where we could um, we, didn't have to, we didn't have to develop from scratch our own criteria of what a good curriculum guide has or does or says. We could begin to use some criteria from a national organization to help us to look at different guides. Um, and as a result of that concrete level work that we got to looking at the, at the documents, we um, had some deep questioning, um, good conversation the last 45 minutes um, of the day where I'm furiously taking notes on chart paper and Alan's wheels were turning. You could just see that um, there was a lot of energy in the room, there was a lot of um, passion in the room, and um, I think uh, we did a good job getting the right people at the table. Um, so that was, 
that was great. And as a result of that, the group said we want to get together sooner rather than later. Um, and so we are meeting again this coming Friday for a full day meeting. And our, our agenda for Friday uh, entails, I think we're calling it a reality check. Uh, where <laughs> we're asking people to come uh, with some data that they've gathered from their colleagues in their buildings. Um, what, what is really happening? What are the programs? What are the initiatives? What are the successes in the core content areas? And what are the challenges? Where are the places where we know there are some issues that we need to address? Um, asking them to bring that with them on Friday so that we can look at that, so that the information is not just held at the building level, but is shared across the district. So we have, a, a, a di at the district level, have a chance to hear um, what each of the, where each of the buildings are. Um, we think we know, but we know that individual teachers know far more. Uh, and so we're looking forward to getting that information. Um, and then, the, again, the second part of the day will, will be more concrete, hands-on, uh, really getting down to making some decisions um, about some things. The CIA team, as we see it at this stage of the, uh, this group, their charge is to oversee the process. These um, people will not be involved with actually writing the curriculum. Um, they will be involved with um, creating frameworks, templates, developing um, recommendations for policies, processes, um, and then hopefully we'll have uh, connections with some of those folks also participating on content area committees who will actually be doing the writing of the curr curriculum, making the selection of the resources and the materials. Uh, but we need the CIA team to be sort of an overarching, overview, overseeing, decision-making group. Um, and our hope is, and Alan has done a great job of, of um, balancing, um, we understand the need for a process, we want to do it right this time. We don't want to, we want the work to last. Um, and so there is an important element of considering the process, but we can't consider the process and value the process so much that we never get to the product. So we've worked uh, hard to try to strike a balance and we want to move along, we want to move forward. Um, and so we're really looking to um, this spring and into the summer to dig right in with um, some content area work and some curriculum writing um, that will be happening. So I look forward to being back in the fall to share with you all of the good stuff we've done between now and then. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions for Sarah? It's great work, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the report, but it's nice to be updated as to how you're starting the work process. I appreciate it. And I'd just like to say that I, I was at that meeting. I'm a proud member. <laughs> um, and it was an amazing experience for me. As, as, as a parent of young children who haven't gone through much of the system, it was a real quick study in what the whole district looks like. Um, and I'm particularly excited about the concept of the collaborative um, environment and the professional learning communities. I think there's a lot of power to be gained from seeing that through um, via the curriculum. So. Okay, uh, we'll move on to committee reports and if we could start with you, Rebecca, on the finance. Sure. Um, I think our last official committee meeting was February 28th. Um, and let's see, it was myself, Kathy, Linda, and Elaine, Alan, Pauline, and even Gary for a little bit at some point along the way. We signed warrants. We reviewed the monthly energy report. And um, in fact, the reason why Gary kind of uh, nicely popped in was we had questions about what would be involved in getting software that would assure the computers would go into rest mode as, a, as an ed energy saving um, effort. And I believe that was prompted by a report that we had in um, the email that you sent out about a school district that had really kind of listed out line item by line item about what they were doing and it prompted us to kind of 
review again what efforts we were putting into place um, here in Cape Elizabeth. Um, so Gary's going to check into that. He says it's already happening to some degree, but that there may be some software to guarantee that, it, that they will switch off. The monthly food service report was reviewed, and uh, we continue to discuss uh, the possibility of linking PowerSchool with the food service system to generate emails regarding account status. Gary is looking into when this would be possible. Obviously, it's um, contingent upon when PowerSchool gets up and running. Um, we spent quite a bit of time discussing the budget workshop uh, presentation and materials, and it was at this meeting that we agreed to recommend that we look to the adjustments uh, for enrollment and, and energy expenses. The next meeting of the Finance Committee will be, I believe, next Tuesday at 12.30 in the Superintendent's office. Thank you. Excuse uh, me, Rebecca, I think yes. I have it as Monday at 12.30, Monday the 20th. Is that Yes. Right? Okay. Thanks. March 20th, that would be a Monday. Sorry. Great, thank so you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, then we'll move on to the planning committee. Uh, Trish, have a report? Um, we haven't met since our last meeting, but I think we're in the process of setting a meeting um, to sort of review the results of the action team. Okay, great. And, we, and so it's, we don't have a We don't have a meeting, meeting set, but, it'll yet, be soon. but it will be soon. Okay. <coughs> um, policy committee, Ann. Well, the policy committee last met on February 6th, which was moved up. We rescheduled because of um, February vacation. So I reported on that meeting. We had had two in between the January and February meeting. So I reported on that at the last um, regular school board meeting. Um, and our next uh, regularly scheduled meeting will be next week. So there really is no new no news. Thank you. Uh, personnel committee, Kathy. Uh, ditto. <laughs> okay. I think she's next, though, maybe. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. As a, as a subsection of the policy committee, uh, the substance abuse policy review subcommittee whoa, um, was B. Trish. Sorry. That's we met on March 2nd, um, and we completed a draft of the policy, and um, we'll be presenting the recommendation for the policy committee for further action at, the, at their next meeting. On, on Next, next Tuesday. Week. Oh, okay. And, and actually, I should list by name, which I probably don't have, I could say off the top of my head, but at this point, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all of the members of the Substance Abuse Policy Committee for their months of work, um, their efforts, and their time are truly appreciated. It's a good thing. I look forward to that report. Um, as we said, personnel is ready. We'll be meeting. Right. We haven't met since the last school board meeting, but we're meeting next. Uh, the week after next, March 27th at 1 o'clock in the superintendent's office. Great. Uh, Rebecca, anything on communications at this point? I was just checking to see when we we're actually meeting again. That's going to be in April. So we have not met since the last meeting. Um, just like to continue to encourage all staff to forward emails, either directly to the, uh, actually probably to your um, building representatives to the communication committee or directly to myself for publication. That way we can just make sure that we have the necessary um, releases for the students before it goes to them. Um, but it's, I've been getting more um, emails from people with pictures and things like that, so it seems to be working. Uh, Kevin, the Student Extracurricular Committee. We were scheduled to meet originally on March uh, 21st, and I got my surprise gift and Keith got his um, artificial knee, I believe. Um, neither one of us expected to be available on March 21st. So we deferred to the calendar committee, as most of the members of the uh, student extracurricular committee were also on the calendar committee. So we thought that would be a more appropriate use of their time. What I have asked everyone to do via email, knowing how busy they are regardless, is to begin to look over the athletic policies um, so that we might make a timely recommendation to the policy committee on any changes, additions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as soon as I understand the status of Keith's recovery, we will try to plan 
the next meeting to coincide with his availability and the availability of all of the other members of the committee. Um, so that's the plan for extracurricular. Thank you. Rebecca, anything on the legislative front? Well, I believe all of you have been receiving all of the bulletins from the MSMA that I've been receiving. Um, I'm assuming that if any of you felt strongly that we needed to, as a board, address any of those, you would have, you would have contacted me for further action. And to this date, I haven't received anything. Um, I did send an email to Connie to further pursue the delineation of the EPS monies and the LD1 money. I have not heard back, um, but I do plan on actually now calling Augusta directly <laughs> <laughs> and seeing if I can get an answer that way. So um, I'll let you know if I hear anything. Great. Uh, the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, I'd just like to take a, a moment to uh, speak to the fact that at this very moment, uh, they are entering into the very public phase of their um, fundraising uh, with their very successful phonathon that's occurring. And we heard last month, of course, the great news regarding TD North's uh, contribution to SEEF. But also, all monies that are being raised from here on, they have had some anon anonymous donors offer to match any contribution over $250 up to a contribution of $50,000 to help SEEF reach their fundraising goal. So I um, would like to thank SEEF for the hard work in their fundraising so that they can establish this endowment. They are also planning on announcing their new board of directors. I believe they have nine new members. Uh, they also have had their um, placements of the new presidents and officers, as, as they're so-called. So that will be voted on at their next meeting. Um, I know I sound like a broken record, but again, our, our, our schools are indebted to SEEF for helping to support our mission and vision. Um, in this time of budget constraints, I just want to reiterate that it, it continues to be important that SEEF in its, has its own mission and vision. And they work collaboratively with our administrators. And their role is to provide innovative opportunities that fall outside of the public responsibility for funding public schools. So I just wanted to, again, make that clear and thank them for their work. And we will be seeing, I think the teachers are currently looking at the opportunity to submit their grant proposals for uh, classroom and professional development. And again, one other thing I wanted to share with you that they're working with is the fact that they have an outreach part of their mission where they are offered to meet with other school systems looking to form educational foundations. And last year, we started that process by going up and meeting with Susan Gendron to get her support. Um, at this point, they are meeting with, uh, uh, I think it's called Falmouth 51, which is the Falmouth Educational Foundation. And they're meeting with people in Kennebunk. But again, I would like to see them expand that role and nominate them next year to make a presentation at the Maine School Board Association um, conference up in October so that more school systems in the state of Maine may benefit from some of the hard lessons and hard work that we've had to establish that foundation. So that would be my report there. Pat, um, Kevin, if, could you speak regarding the pass? I have not been able to be in touch with pass for a couple of weeks now. Um, I'm sure I will have a fuller report for you next time. OK. Um, volunteer Advisory Committee, Trish. Um, we met on March 6th. It's a committee that meets annually. Um, volunteer Services Director Gail Schmader gave an update of the volunteer programs, and she reported on the volunteer awareness and registration databases, career fair, meeting student teacher needs, the high school volunteer club, mentor, mentor program, and escapades. She provided some interesting t statistics. Um, we had, there are 750 adult volunteers, some of whom do not have kids in our schools. There's about 200 student volunteers in the system, and 
Using a minimum wage figure of $6.35, she reported that the value to the system is about $140,000 for these volunteers, so we're appreciative of their support. Um, and the committee at the end sort of concluded brainstorming ways to enhance her program and possibly recruit additional volunteers. So thank you to all those who do contribute their time and talents to the schools as a volunteer. Okay. Thank you. The, oh, the Town Comprehensive Plan Committee, I, I, I'd just like to share that um, they are continuing to move forward um, topic by topic in regards to the future plans for the town. Uh, we do have the opportunity as a school department to give input into the Town Comprehensive Plan, and we have identified some specifics in the report where we have been invited to propose to the full committee um, some input and Alan and myself and Pauline have started that process and probably sometime in late spring perhaps maybe as late as the summer we will be um, part of their agenda for the opportunity to uh, be in their report so I will keep you abreast of that. Unfinished business. Uh, we have consideration of policies for the second reading. Ann? Okay, well, we have five policies um, tonight, all of which we presented last month as a first reading. Um, there are, just before we go through these one by one, there are no changes to any of these from what we presented last month. And actually, a couple of these, there were no changes from the original policies to begin with. So should I just go through these quickly one by one and we can vote on them, or should we just vote on them as a package? I'll go through them one by one so that the public knows what, sure. what they are. Okay. The first one is um, FA facilities development. Um, I'd like to make a motion that the board accept this policy as presented. Okay. Rebecca, second? Discussion? Oh, yeah. All those in favor? It be 7 0. Next is FB facilities planning. I'd like to make a motion that the board accept this policy as presented here. I have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Trish. Second? Second. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, and um, discussion? No? All right, all those in favor? 7 0. Next is ICAA religious policies. I'd like to make a motion that the board accept this policy as presented. I know what I did now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Second. Thank you. I have a discussion. It would laugh, but it hurts too much. <laughs> um, so we are have a, a, a discussion or no discussion on this. All those in favor? This is IKD honor roll. I'd like to make a motion that the board accept this policy as presented here. Second. Thank you, Kevin. Discussion? I just have a question. I went back to my notes from our policy committee meeting and I thought we had taken out the sentence that's on the first page it says a student at Cape Elizabeth High School must achieve honors or high honors for the first two quarters of the school year to be considered an honor roll student. I thought we had taken that out. You know, I think you're right, Trish. Yeah. I went back to my notes and I thought yeah. we just sort of had a discussion that it didn't make sense, so I don't think that should be there. Yeah. So could I revise my motion that, um, so I move that we accept, adopt this policy with the exception of that sentence that Trish just read and that'll be removed for the final version. Second. Thank you. Any other questions? Being none, all those in favor of the amended motion? 7-0. Okay, and the last one is JLCD administering medication to students. I just can't find mine. It's is it staple? staple to the, uh, uh, okay. one to the honor roll, okay. Just wanted to be sure that everybody had what they were voting on and that I knew that I had it. Okay. So I'd like to move that we accept this policy um, as presented here. Second. Thank you, Kevin. Questions or discussion? Okay. All those in favor? 
Seven. Zero. Thank you for all the work on those policies from the committee and uh, the administrators. Under new business, we have consideration of the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee positions. And I have just one this evening. Hmm. It is a returning coaching nominations for Carrie Curtis as middle school assistant swim coach for 60 hours at level three, the stipend to come from half of middle school girls expansion stipend. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation? I move to accept the superintendent's recommendation for athletic fee position. Is there a second? Kathy? Discussion? Questions? Being none, all those in favor? 7 0. We have consideration of the superintendent's recommendations for co curricular fee position. I'm passing to you a, an updated copy of this. Uh, what it is is a clerical error that occurred. Uh, prior to this, you accepted Todd Roberts to be Jazz Band 3 uh, instructor at the high, not instructor, but uh, working at the high school. Tom Lazat is the name that should have been on that. Mm -hmm. So what I need to have is just for the record a vote changing that from, uh, Tom, uh, from Todd Roberts to Tom Lazon. I move that uh, we remove Todd Roberts as Jazz Band 3 and substitute Tom Lazat for that position. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any further questions on this? No? All those in favor? 7 0. Uh, consideration of the superintendent's nomination to administrative position for 2005-06. Uh, as I explained to you at the last board meeting, when I brought forward the nominations of all uh, administrators who have been here at least two years, is that one administrator other than myself has been here less than two years, and that is Steve Conley. Uh, therefore, by law, I have to have his nomination in prior to April 1st. I would say to you very clearly that I have worked very closely with Steve this year. Uh, we probably have spent more hours uh, talking about several different issues as the year has gone on. Uh, I have done an interim evaluation to Steve, and like all the administrators, will be finishing a full evaluation uh, as, uh, as we get closer to the end of the school year. But I highly recommend Steve as, for a second year as a middle school principal. I nominate Steve Conley for second year as middle school principal. Thank you. Is there a second? Kathy? Any questions for Alan or discussion? Being none, all those in favor? We have 7 0. Consideration of a request for a half time unpaid leave of absence for the 2005 06 school year. Okay. Uh, you're going to be, as you heard uh, Sarah do a presentation for us just a little while ago on curriculum. I'm now bringing this to you, is a request from Sarah, uh, which I will read to you first and then comment on it. As we've discussed over the course of the last several months, I am writing to request that I be allowed to move to part-time status, or 105 days, uh, for the 2006-2007 school year. The purpose of this change is to allow me to complete my doctoral studies at Lesley University. Thank you for considering my request. Please let me know if you have any questions or need further information. Uh, I've kind of kept putting this off <laughs> a little longer and a little longer, and Sarah and I have had many discussions about it. Uh, what Sarah and I have done is we've sat recently and talked about what would Sarah's responsibilities be for that 105 days, and what would we do to take care of the other responsibilities. Uh, tonight, what I'm asking you to do is to vote to accept her request to work 105 days next year. Uh, with that is an understanding that she and I will work out when she works. There may be some weeks when I need her for three days. There may be some weeks I need her for two days. There may be some weeks when she will be working on her doctoral dissertation only. What I will be coming back to you in, in April is a plan for the other half of her position. Uh, it will not cost the board any more money, but will offer an opportunity for someone else to get some their feet wet also, so to speak, in working on curriculum. 
And so uh, basically what, I, what I've asked Sarah to do very clearly is to continue to head up the, uh, this curriculum initial study and to work with that team, which we call the oversight team. But we will be looking at uh, doing some other things with another possibility. Uh, looking first with in-house, uh, and therefore if somebody, we can work out something in-house and we'll work out some coverage for that person. If we can't, then I will go outside to look at some possible contracted services. But uh, I feel very strongly, as much as I hate to lose Sarah for half a year, I, uh, I, will ha I do have to say to you, I thoroughly enjoy working with her. She's a very knowledgeable person. She knows her stuff and she knows it well. And I've been around for a while and worked with curriculum directors. And so and as she knows I have strong opinions. I've never been shy, shy about them. And I am, have been extremely impressed with Sarah and the work that she has done with us, both over the last few years when I was not here and particularly this year. And even to the point where she did get shifted in midstream a few years ago to do assessment and did yeoman's duty with that sometimes thinking that perhaps it isn't the duty I want to do. But uh, curriculum is the duty she wants to do. Uh, she knows I have a love for curriculum too. And so I recommend allowing her to do this so she can finish her doctorate work uh, and with her promise that she will be back to us to continue curriculum work from there. Sarah, did you in fact make that commitment? Because <laughs> otherwise I'm not letting you go. <laughs> Can we have a, um, a motion? I move to, uh, to allow Sarah to uh, pursue her doctoral degree and work for us for 105 days in the next year. Second. Second. Thank you, Anne. Any further questions for Alan or Sarah? Um, you will be back. <laughs> um, I'll ask a question. I'm sure. sure you've discussed it, but I, I need to hear it so I feel reassured. Uh, with this new momentum that we've got going around curriculum, um, are we going to focus her time back here so she can continue to push, keep that ball rolling? Yes. We've, we've talked about that, and she can speak to it herself. But that's, that's been a major part of our discussion, is to keep that ball rolling, particularly the committee that you're on, the oversight committee. Yeah. And then from there, what we'll look at is what will happen with the actual writing of the uh, curriculum. Uh, she will still be responsible for oversight of that, but we, what I will be looking at is the other half of her job is somebody who will actually be the person who will be out there in the buildings making sure the work gets done and reporting back to Sarah and to me. Okay. I'm really sure. Okay. All those in favor? Reluctantly. 7-0. At this time, we have an opportunity for the second public comment for this evening. If there's anybody who would like to speak to the board at this time, I welcome them to the podium. Being none, uh, the school board agenda request. Are there any uh, requests from school board members to place an item on our agenda for our April meeting? I guess this would be the time when I'd ask the table to be put on. Okay. Great. And the, the opportunity to have something written would come from the legislative committee? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do the work and we can't do it at a business meeting, so we'll put it on for I consideration. I would be happy to draft something and I will get it out to people ahead of the meeting so that we can have a little bit of forewarning about the, the, the language. And, and, and if there's some, you know, any other supporting information regarding the details of it, I seem to be trying to glean it from newspapers and I'm not always getting consistent facts. Yeah, Maine School Management did send us something. Yeah. Um, but I, I received something else. Um, I've received several pieces of information from other organizations, so I will make sure they get copied and put in your mailboxes. That'd be helpful. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, we'll add that. Announcement of upcoming meetings. Um, going through the dates to remember, we have a wellness committee meeting, which will be uh, this Thursday, March 16th, 1230 to 2, to be held in the middle school conference room. 
Policy Committee will be meeting next Tuesday, March 21st, 12 noon in the William Jordan Conference Room. Finance, again, I've got this date right, Monday, March 20th, 1230, Superintendent's Office. Uh, we have another school board business meeting next month, Tuesday, April 11th, 7 p.m. here in Town Council Chambers. Uh, back to our subcommittee, our committees, we've uh, got the calendar committee, Tuesday, March 21st, 3 p.m., William Conference Room, personnel committee, Monday, March 27th, 1 p.m., superintendent's office, and we do have a school board workshop, Tuesday, March 28th, 7 p.m., in the high school library, and the topic for that workshop will be discussion on the high school accredita accreditation report that we all have in hand, but we will have the, a workshop on that. And we are currently looking for our April, March, April, April school board workshop to address. We'll be on bullying on at that bullying. point. Yep. We've been trying to get uh, some speakers, but I would I throw that out there because I'd like the, I think there's public interest in this one, and uh, that would be the fourth Tuesday of the month in April. That being said, do we have any other items? I do, um, and I'm not sure if I, maybe I'll make this as a motion, um, and it's budget related, but um, I would like to move that the school board make a request of the town council to exclude community services from the um, spending cap of 3.4 as community services is a self-sustaining um, entity and shouldn't be considered as such. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Any discussion on this motion? I support this motion. Um, certainly after listening to Sue's presentation at the workshop, um, I have to think that this may have been um, something that was not foreseen when, they, when the cap was implemented. Um, and Given that we have this odd oversight role, I think it is appropriate for us to make a recommendation of this sort. Okay. And, and my assumption is that it would, that would be something that would go to the Finance Committee and be involved in their presentation of the budget to the Town Council. Okay. Any? I, I tend to agree. Any, any organization that's self-sustaining um, should not be held to a cap when regardless of the increase in expenses, they are going to generate sufficient revenue to offset those expenses. So I certainly support community services in this matter and uh, okay. I just think we should go with it. Just a uh, point of clarification. I'm not sure when community services presents its budget in relationship to when the school board presents its budget. Do we know what that is? Do you come before or after us, Sue? Before six. Ah, so then that would require us to do something before we uh, present. Good. We should. The we, finance we could, committee will be meeting on Monday. Yeah. I'd like to suggest that we will draft a statement, and if if we approve, if the board approves tonight the intent of the statement, and then we'll just get a copy of what that statement is for comments to the board, and then we can. Go from there. Do we do we meet as a in a business meeting prior to to the presentation to the town council of your budget? No. Yeah. I'm not sure what our options are. I, I, I mean, I think it sounds like we're all in support of this. We just want to make sure that it's done in the manner in which everybody's informed and can support it. And we would need to see that before it gets sent to the town council. Agreed. Um, Might I suggest that we have in the past, when, when necessary, um, preceded our workshop with a very brief special business meeting for the purpose of adopting the, this, these kind of things formally? As long as it's advertised. Yeah, okay. Then I, if everyone's a, a, a agreeable to that, why don't we plan on that? And we'll get that recommendation from finance. Okay. Thank you. If there uh, is a motion, though. Yep. Yeah. We'll finish it. I'm sorry. Um, any other discussion or questions? Great. All those in favor? 
whoops, seven zero. Uh, consideration of the superintendent's request to retire uh, to executive session to discuss negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth Administrators Association as provided by 1 MRSA 4056A. I would move to um, enter into executive session and I would request the board's permission to excuse myself. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, Linda, and any further comments? Great. All those in favor? 7 0. The meeting is adjourned. I would just like to retire.